Hi there, my name is Karen Brennan, and let's talk about sleeps and dreams. There are two definitions of sleep that I found. The first definition was from the Merriam-Webster, and that is the natural periodic suspension of consciousness during which the powers of the body are restored, or the more simple version of the definition, the state of rest that is amazing. There are two types of sleep, non-rapid eye movement and rapid eye movement. Non-rapid eye movement is a very relaxed type of sleep that gets progressively deeper, and rapid eye movement is a very active type of sleep where the brain is almost as active as it was awake. You go into non-rapid eye movement sleep as soon as you fall asleep, suggesting that non-rapid eye movement might be the most important, and rapid eye movement only gets its turn later in the night after you first complete the cycle of sleep. And when you're deprived of non-rapid eye movement sleep, the body tries to make up for it whenever it gets a chance, and the body also tries to make up for rapid eye movement sleep, although not as much as it does for non-rapid eye movement sleep. And also, studies are starting to show that while we need non-rapid eye movement, we don't appear to need rapid eye movement sleep after child, which suggests that we technically don't need rapid eye movement sleep at all. Here we have four stages of sleep, although technically there's a fifth one, but we just count it as rapid eye movement sleep, and we kind of already talked about it. Stage one is the beginning of the sleep cycle, and it's relatively light sleep of this light stage of sleep. Stage one can be considered a transition period between wakefulness and sleep. In stage one, the brain produces high amplitude theta waves, which are very slow brain waves, and this period of sleep last only a brief time around 5-10 minutes. If you awaken someone during the sleep, they might report that they really weren't asleep. Stage 2 is the second stage of sleep and lasts for approximately 20 minutes. The brain begins to produce rapid bursts of rhythmic brainwaves, activity known as sp- sleep spindles. Uh, body temperature starts to decrease and the heart rate begins to slow. Uh, stage 3, which has deep s- Deep, slow brain waves known as delta waves begin to emerge. Stage 3 is the transitional period between light sleep and very deep sleep. And stage 4 sleep is sometimes referred to as delta sleep because of the slow brain waves known as delta waves that occur during this time. Stage 4 is a deep sleep that lasts for approximately 30 minutes, and bedwetting and sleepwalking are most likely to occur at the end of the sleep. So the real question is... Why do we even need sleep? Taken from a uh, kid's health website, sleep gives your body a rest and allows it to prepare for the next day. It's like giving your body a mini vacation, and sleep allows for your brain a chance to sort things out. While scientists aren't exactly sure what kinds of organizing your brain does while you sleep, uh, they think that the sleep might be the time when the brain sorts and stores information, replaces chemicals, and solves problems. Skipping one night's sleep makes a person cranky and clumsy. After missing two nights of sleep, a person will have problems thinking and doing things. His or her brain and body can't do the normal tasks nearly as well. And after five nights of sleep, a person will hallucinate, which means this seeing things that aren't actually there, and eventually it becomes impossible for the brain to give directions to the rest of the body without sleep. Common side effects also lead to fatigue, uh... And of course, extreme out of the ordinary things, diabetes, stroke, heart disease, heart failure, heart attack, irregular heartbeat, or high blood pressure. So, what are dreams? Uh, The formal definition of a dream is a sequence of images, emotions, and thoughts passing through a sleeping person's mind. Dreams are notable for their hallucinatory imagery, discontinuities and incongruities, and for the dreamer's dissolution acceptance of the content and later difficulties remembering it. Now, dream theories have come up with a couple of different things to explain why we dream. Uh, the first one is to satisfy, to satisfy our own wishes. Uh, Freud talked about dreams provide a psychic safety valve that discharges otherwise unacceptable feelings. Um, he relates it to latent and manifest content, which are pretty much, uh, according to Freud, manifest as the remembered story line of a dream. And latent content, according to Freud, is the underlying meaning of a dream. Dreams also help develop and preserve neural pathways, which relates back to the stages of sleep, where uh, sleep helps the body. Um, also, sleep helps file away memories, which we also talked about with sleep. And to reflect on cognitive development, which some dream research dispute both the Freudian and activation synthesis theories, uh, preferring said to see dreams as a part of a brain maturation and cognitive development. So that is the basic to sleeps and dreams. Thank you for watching.